and welcome to the Anti Shofar Ministries. Um, since it is Black History Month, I uh, kind of wanted to go into something other than some of the um, end time prophecy stuff um, that we go over and some of the exposés that we do, but I um, definitely wanted to do this teaching called Myth and Lies, The Curse of Ham, Black Skin is a Sin. Um, in the 21st century, of course, um, racism still exists. Um, we see a bunch of other things that are, that are taking place. Of course, we're doing this lesson not to become sectarian or to exalt one ethnic group over another, but to really get a spiritual understanding of what's taking place centuries ago and what's taking place even now that minds, people's minds have been ingrained with um, white supremacy and black inferiority and just some other things and all. And a lot of it has to do with religion and past history with um, Christianity um, that's taking place. Not to say that people are Christian by name, but not in principle, not followers of Christ, where um, ugly things have taken place in the past, which has brought a reproach upon the name of the Lord. But we know that we strive to follow truth and biblical truth and not to distort the word of God, feel like that the word of God has been used as a way of promoting certain myths and propaganda to exalt one group over another. So um, this evening, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. And we're gonna go ahead and move on and let's start our lesson. So First John, one and seven says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. So um, basically what Apostle John is saying, we walk in the light and in the light we have fellowship one with another and his blood cleanses all of our sin. So um, when Jesus came, he came that we might have life and that much more abundantly. He came to save all those who would receive them, no matter what ethnic group that you come from. And I, I just kind of want to also talk about, because I've heard even black ministers talk about like, hey, you know, um, thank the Lord for slavery because we could have been still over in Africa and um, worshiping our ancestors and all these um, pagan practices. And that doesn't justify what took place, which will lead me on to the next scripture, um, which Jesus said to go into all nations and make disciples, not slaves. So when we look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we've seen how when Europeans begin to colonize um, different continents, different countries. They brought Christianity, but they tried to subjugate the people and they used methods of violence and other things and all, and also enslaved um, in order to quote unquote, to convert people as Christians. That's that's not even based on the word of God, the teachings of Jesus and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. He said to go and teach all nations and then making sure that you're baptizing them, 
teaching them to observe all the things, all of his commandments. So this is where we see in past history, things become deviated, but it's just, you know, a lot of people, they focus on slavery as a white European issue that took place. But we're going to examine also to the forerunners of um, race-based slavery was not the Europeans. It was based on Islam had been doing it for centuries and the Europeans began to do it centuries later and it they you know they took some of the principles and all and you know it's really impacted um black people in in general so we're gonna move on so the myth and curse of ham driving force of racism white supremacy and black inferiority um the myth of the curse of Ham has been used in religious circles of the Middle Eastern Islam, European Christianity, and Talmudic Rabbinic Judaism to perpetuate dark skin as evil and ugly. This myth encouraged the enslavement of millions of Black Africans, which looked at Black people as nothing more than savages and almost equated them as animals. They also this type of teaching has made black people or blacks are looked at as mentally and intellectually inferior. So even this has impacted um, black people in general, um, we look at having bad hair, good hair, uh, light skin is better than dark, skin with colorism and just other things and all um if you speak proper english um you're looked up on you're talking white which i don't know talking white and talking proper is it's just using proper english and it's just so many things has even formulated and impacted the minds of black people to have a mindset uh being inferior or less than and that's why we want to really bring some biblical truth um, in this teaching to just kind of help edify and clarify some things. And what's also even taking place that it's impacted some black millennials where they look at Christianity and like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm cool on Christianity. You know, Christianity is is more of a white man's religion, which is not true because um Jesus and his 12 um, disciples were all Jewish. Um, Christianity was in Africa long before Islam in North Africa. Um, we could see that some of the leaders there at the Church of Antioch were African um, people of color. Um, we can also too look at scriptures of even in the genealogy of Jesus that Rahab, which was a Canaanite woman, um, is a descendant of Ham. Um, we know Rahab, the story of the walls of Jericho, and um, she brought in the spies, she protected the spies, and they told her to, to tie a scarlet um, thing around um, where she lived, so, and she was protected when the walls collapsed, and she um, end up um, marrying a Jewish man and um, was part of Jesus' genealogy. We can also look at uh, Jacob's son. Um, Judah had married a Canaanite woman. And also too, we know the story how um, his sons married Tamar. Um, they, a couple of them died. Um, his he had his youngest son ready to marry, and she tricked him, and um, Judah ended up getting um, Tamar pregnant, and um, end up having twins, which is part of the genealogy of also Jesus too. So um, we're gonna dive more into 
talking about that, but that just gives you a little bit more clarity of of the Bible in regards to um, black presence and other things that have taken place. Now, we want to look at three myths of Ham's sin against his father Noah and why, quote unquote, Noah cursed him. Let's look at the three myths that are out there. The myths and stories of Ham sodomizing his father Noah or castrating him or sleeping with his wife, Noah's wife, which is um, Ham's mother, which is incest. Um, anyway, when Noah wakes up, he learns what happened. He curses Ham, his son, and his own grandson, which is Canaan, to forever be slaves to his brother. And that's why, according to this interpretation of the Bible, it's okay to make black people slaves. Um, I want to stop right there because um, early Mormonism, they made it seem like that black people were in inferior and evil because um, when Cain was cursed and quote unquote, um, a mark was put up on his, his head, but it didn't say that God changed him to being black, that um, black people are um, descendants of, of Cain. So it's just a whole lot of other things that have taken place that's really twisted the minds of people and really sow demonic seeds into believing these myths and these lies. So famous scripture that's always used to justify slavery and racial inferiority comes from Genesis chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. We'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant, and God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servants. So just looking, just plain view at the scripture, it says nothing where Ham or Canaan's skin due to the fact that Noah cursed him, that their skin was changed black. That's the tradition of men who interject their own devilish demonic view of what occurred to subjugate um, black people into being slaves and less than. Now, did Ham sin against his father? Now, we look to uncover nakedness in the biblical idiom is for sexual intercourse. So uh, when you look at culturally um, um, with Hebrew or Jewish, they use um, within um, Jewish culture or Hebrew culture, they use idiom. So one of the idioms for uncovered nakedness is sexual intercourse. So none shall approach any blood relative of his to uncovered nakedness. I am the Lord states that's stated in Leviticus 18 and six. So Leviticus 18 verse six states, none shall approach any blood relative of his to uncovered nakedness. So again, the connotation of uncovered nakedness is sexual. Um, the biblical idiom is sexual intercourse. So did Ham really sin against his father Noah? Let's look a little bit more deeply into it. Um, in the book, in the call of Tor by a rabbi, Eli Monk interprets the sin against Noah as um, pederasty, um, which is on page 220, which states this, the Genesis passage had been interpreted by some to mean that Ham had sex with Noah's wife, producing Canaan by incest, a conclusion bolstered by Leviticus 20, verse 11. 
The man that lies with his wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. Ultimately, the sin is interpreted to be homosexual molestation of Noah by Canaan. So this is Rabbi Monk. He says, on the contrary of Ham having an ancestral relationship with his mother producing um, Canaan out of incest, that did not occur. Actually, the proper translation should be that Canaan actually violated Noah when Noah was was drunk in wine. He came into Noah's tent and had a sexual encounter or molested Noah while he was drunk. So that kind of gives us a full perspective of what um, occurred. Now, let's move on. The fact Canaan sinned against Noah and Canaan was cursed. The proper translation of scripture should be Noah knew his grandson done unto him. Um, when we look at Charles E. Sieberman's book, Crisis in Black and White, he's, he states some very profound things that really brings things to light um, of Genesis chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. He says the Hebrew word, Beno Hekatan, may either be translated his youngest son or his grandson. Grandson is correct, for Ham was not Noah's youngest son. Japheth was the youngest son. Ham was the middle son, and Shem was the oldest. So you can um, refer to scriptures, Genesis chapter 7, verse 13, Genesis chapter 9, verse 18, and Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. So the fact of the matter is that Ham wasn't the youngest son. He was the middle son, and the translation Beno Hecatan means can be translated either youngest son or grandson, which gives us a little bit more clarity and more, more in depth in what Genesis chapter 9, verses 24 through 27 is saying. So we move on. Genesis chapter 10, verse 6 has the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. When we look at the English Standard Version translation, the sons of Ham is Cush, Egypt, Put, which is modern day Libya, and Canaan. So my question is, why wasn't Cush, Mizraim, Put, Curse, Cush, Mizraim, and Put, were also sons of Ham. So if Ham and Canaan were cursed, shouldn't all of Canaan's brothers be cursed? That's the question that we, that's the, I guess what they would say, the pink elephant in the room. Um, shouldn't the other three sons been cursed also too? Why was it, you know, again, people pointed out with Cain or Canaan and, and Ham. So does the scripture state, once Noah cursed him, he turned black? Does Genesis chapter 9, verse 24 through 27 state that Ham turned from being white man to being a black man based on Noah's curse? Does the scriptures state that Ham and all of his descendants should be slaves forever? Absolutely not. But let's, let's dig in and we're searching for truth. Now, when we look at leprosy, when somebody sin, when a person sin, we see in the Bible, and they wish their skin was smitten or stricken, there's a person was stricken with leprosy. Now, when we look at Numbers chapter um, 12, verse 9 through 10, it says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous. 
white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Now, I'm going to stop right there because if you read in context earlier what takes place in this passage of scripture, in this chapter, um, Aaron and Miriam are upset because it states that Moses married an Ethiopian woman. So, of course, I'm going to stop right there. Now, Ethiopian woman is a um, she would have been a descendant of Cush. Now, we know that Moses was the lawgiver, the writer of the Torah. He was a prophet. Um, he was a great deliverer. You would think sitting up there on Mount Sinai and being imparted, giving um, the Torah, that the Lord would have told him, no, 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 Moses, you can't marry this Ethiopian woman, this black woman, because they're cursed and, you know, you don't want your kids to be cursed. So they get into an argument over him being married over and challenging his authority and his leadership because he's married to this Ethiopian woman, this black woman. So she, Miriam, is smitten with leprosy. Now, for some reason or another, Aaron wasn't because I look at it from this point of view, Aaron was in a higher position. He was the high priest um, over Israel, but Miriam was turned, became leprous and she had to be separated from the camp. And it says she was white as snow. Now, if I'm reading into this and I want to um, create my own religious opinion and try to say this is where um, white people originated from leprosy um, because her skin, it says her skin was white as snow. Um, I can build a case behind that, but it's a false, um, it's a false, um, false interpretation of the scriptures and it's a twisting of the scriptures and it's not the actual truth. It's not properly, rightfully dividing the word of God. So even when we move on, we see another case of leprosy and skin smitten when a person sins. Um, Second Kings chapter five, verse um, 27. This is Naaman after this naming and Gehazi. Um, Gehazi was um, the servant of Elisha and um, Elisha um, had, Naaman had came to the prophet and the prophet told him to go dip in the Jordan River he filled seven times and he'd be healed of his leprosy. Um, Naaman being a Gentile and a Syrian, eventually he was healed. Um, he wanted to give the, the man of God money and all. Um, Elisha was like, um, I don't want your money. Um, you can take it. God bless you. You know, I'm just doing the work of the Lord. Um, Gehazi, the servant was like, hey, I want to get paid. He lies and was like, hey, actually, my master wanted the money. He takes the money and all. Um, the prophet is through um, supernaturally through the Holy Spirit reveals what occurs and leprosy is placed on Gehazi and he's turned into white as snow. Again, um, his skin is smitten with leprosy, which your skin turns pale and red and scabs and other things taking place, but Never in scripture, it says that somebody is cursed and they're turned um, black and being black is, uh, black skin is a sin and a curse. So let's look at the origins of the curse of him and black slaves. Um, are black people the results of the curse of him? Um, Let's look at some of the early origins of the curse of him began in um, Arab Islamic writings between the 7th to the 14th century. Now we look at the dual 
curse theory is based on Noah cursing Ham and Ham turning black. In addition, all of his sons and descendants were slaves for life to Shem and Japheth. Um, Noah cursed both Ham and Canaan. So um, in Islamic writings, it's a dual curse that Noah, when he cursed Ham, he cursed both Ham and Canaan and all of Ham's descendants. So they placed that curse upon um, Put, upon Mizraim, which is Egypt, and um, within Cush. Um, now we look at even with Mizraim, which is Egypt, which um, Egypt was a great world power where you have the pharaohs and all. You didn't see the pharaohs um, being subservient or being servants or slaves. Um, slavery during ancient times took place in different cultures and um, different continents. But the difference of what we see that took place um, with um, American slavery or European slavery, um, enslavement of Africans, and also too with um, Arab Islamic um, countries who subjugated and were enslaving Black Africans long before the Europeans were taking place was race based. All right. So when we look at the writings of Ibn um, Kalin, um, he says, Negroes are the children of Ham, the son of Noah. They're singled out to be black as a result of Noah's curse, which produced Ham's color, the slavery God inflicted upon his descendants. Um, so we see this Islamic source, he's basing Ham's slavery on him, the result of the curse, him being black and slavery, God inflicting slave, inflicting slavery upon his descendants. Um, when we look at Altabari, volume two, page 11 of the Hadith, it says, Shem, the son of Noah, was the father of the Arabs, the Persians, and the Greeks. Ham was the father of the black Africans, and Japheth was the father of the Turks and Gog and Magog, who were cousins of the Turks. Noah prayed that the prophets and apostles would be descended from Shem, and the kings would be from Japheth. He prayed that the Africans' color would change so that their descendants would be slaves to the Arabs and the Turks. Now we look at the next source, the book of Jajin. Ham was most beautiful in face and form, but God changed his color and that of his progeny. Because of the curse of Noah, Noah cursed him and blackened his appearance and that his progeny and that they made slaves to the sons of Shem and Japheth. When we look at David Goldberg's book, The Curse of Ham, The Case of Rabbinic Racism on page 27, he says, the persistence of, the, of this linkage of slavery with the blackness in the Islamic world is explained by Islam's long history of enslaving black Africans. Even today, in many Arabic dialects, the word for black is ab, which is actually means slave. Now, I've, I've heard, um, I believe it was over in, in London, and I've heard a black people, uh, a black Christian person um, going and debating a Islamic um, uh, Arab um, Muslim and this is in, I guess this is also a racial slur, um, Ab, as calling them a slave, or almost, this is almost um, equated as using the N word in um, Arabic. When we look at even the 21st century um, slave raids in Sudan, found this in um, 
bbc.com um, news, um, the article entitled Viewpoint from Sudan where black people are called slaves, which was written July 25th of 2020. Two Sudanese academics, Suleiman Baldo and Ushra Mahmoud publicly alleged that in 1987 that they uncovered evidence of some of the northern based Arab groups enslaving black people from the south. Um, they say these groups were armed by Sadiq al Mahadi military and were the genesis of the Jajawi militias which were later accused of ethnic cleansing in Darfur. So we knew the tragedies that took place there in Sudan. Let me go ahead and read on. The superiority complex of many members of the Arab elite lies at the heart of some of the worst conflicts to hit Sudan since the independence as black people either, black people either demand equality or their own homeland. The Southern slave raids were widely reported to have continued until the end of the Civil War in 2005, which led to the mainly black African or black African South Sudan um, Sudan seceding from Arabic speaking Sudan five years later. The women and children abducted by Arab groups to work for a master for free often never saw their families again. Through some cases, their freedom was controversially brought up by a groups such as the Christian Solidarity uh, International. So we see slavery, actually black slavery ended here in America, just in general in America, um, around 1865, 1867, some, something around that time period. It ended a whole lot earlier in, um, in England and the British colonies. But if you do your research, some of the last countries to end slavery, especially the enslavement of black people were primarily some of your Arab countries. Um, when we look at the writings of the Karite scholar Aaron B. Elijah in the 14th century, um, he does a commentary on Genesis chapter 9, verse 25. He says, Abraham Abin Ezra spoke out forcefully against doubling down curse of Ham's interpretation. He noted that there are those who say he intends the Muslims that blacks are slaves because of Noah's curse. He refuted the claim by pointing to Nimrod, the son of Cush, as a prime example, as the first post civilian king. Obviously, a king cannot be a slave. Ibn Ezra presses his point further when he co commits or comments on the biblical curse to be Canaan. He shall be a slave to his brothers, example, to Cush, Mizraim, and Put. Cush, the ancestor of blacks, is a master, not a slave. So he's absolutely right. The first world ruler, even though not such a good person, was Nimrod, which he, his father was Cush, which he, his ancestor was Ham. All right. So Nimrod was not a slave. We look at some of the early pharaohs of um, Egypt, they weren't slaves, they, they were kings, they were royalty. Now, when we look at, um, again, David Goldenberg's um, book, The Curse of Ham, Race and Slavery in Early Judaism and Christianity and Islam on page 194, he states, the curse of Ham in various forms became a very powerful tool for maintaining the existing order in society. Its importance for explaining, thus justifying the enslavement of blacks cannot be underestimated. We can clearly see the close relationship between social order and biblical justification by tracking the appearance of the curse. We note 
its first appearance in the Christian West as soon as Europe discovered Black Africa and began to engage in the slave trade of its inhabitants in the 15th century Portugal, Gomes Inez de Zazora wrote about Black African slaves and he had seen that Blacks were Moors like others, though they're slaves in accordance with their ancient customs, which I believe to have been because of the curse, which after the deluge, Noah laid up on the sun um, Cain or um, Shem, which is Ham, cursing him in this way, and that his race should be subject to all other races of the world. Now let's look into the influence of Talmudic, rabbinic Judaism, and the curse of Ham, and with in context of medieval Europe and the Middle East. Um, the Talmud Sanhedrin 108b records the following um, folktale told by the third century rabbi, God prohibit, prohibited Noah and all the creatures in the ark from engaging in sex during the flood. I have decided to destroy my world and you will not create life or you would create life. Three creatures that transgress during this time on the ark was the dog, the raven, and Ham, the son of Noah, were punished. Ham's punishment was he became black and procreative, genetically punishment for procreative and sexual sin. So um, the Sanhedrin 108 in the Talmud states that um, the dog, the raven, and ham were all cursed because they engaged in sex and they shouldn't have. Now, when we look at the next source of um, Talmudic uh, rabbinic um, Judaism and the curse of ham, um, the second story is the Midrash Genesis Rabbah 36 and 7, and an elaboration of the biblical narrative in Genesis chapter 9. Ham saw Noah's nakedness and assumes that Ham castrated his father Noah. In retaliation, Noah said to Ham, you prevented me from doing that which is done in the dark, the sexual act. Therefore, may your progeny be black and ugly. Rabbi Huna also said to Rabbi Joseph, named, you have prevented me, which is talking about the curse of Ham from doing something that is done in the dark. Therefore, your seed will be ugly and dark skinned. Rabbi Haya said, Ham and the dog copulated in the ark. Therefore, Ham came forth black skinned while the dog publicly exposed its copulation. So, here within this rabbinic writing, it's talking about it equates black as being black and ugly, uh, uh, dark skin being ugly. Again, as I stated earlier, when we begin this lesson, it, it, it has really influenced and really impacted the mindset of African-Americans where we have colorism, where um, people pay money to bleach their skin or have plastic surgery to get their um, nose done or, um, if somebody's lips are a little bit thicker and other things are kinky hair or nappy hair or coarse hair, um, to be quite honest with you, um, the, the early ancient Greeks and Romans believe that when people were a little bit more darker, it was in regards to climate and other things and all. Um, even when we look at the continent of Africa, you have different shades of dark-skinned people on different levels, different hair textures. Um, the closer that you get to the equator, um, people that live within that region, the more coarse their hair is. Now, if you look at that, um, they're protected by their hair being coarse protects them from the sun. 
uh, that that level of protection. So we see that. Now let's move on because we begin to see how um, European Christianity begins to adopt this mindset of the curse of Ham. Uh, French scholar um, Guillaume de Postel in 1561 had this ark story. He says, Postel wrote that Ham, Shem, Japheth, and their father Noah were all white. Noah warned his sons to abstain from sexual contact with their wives, and Ham met with his wife, and therefore, as evidence of disobedience and contempt of the divinity, God willed his son Cush to be born with the dark color from whom the Ethiopians descended as do others out of his stock. The Ethiopians were born from Cush, the son of Ham, who was otherwise born from the white wife of a white man, but stained by the crime of his father. Um, again, that's found in Postel's writing. Um, let's move on. When we look at other writings that takes place, uh, this is the portrait of image of God in man, uh, written in 1627 on page 279, quoted by Vaughn um, in the Roots of American Racism, page 164, as the black slave trade moved to England and then America, the curse of Ham moved with it. An English author wrote in 1627, this curse to be a servant was laid first upon the disobedient son um, Cham, and we see this day that the Moors or Chams or Hams, um, Prasari, are so like slaves yet. When we look at another source, uh, this is found um, written the great question answered: Are is slavery a sin? and itself by James A. Sloan on page 75, page 78, and page 80. In America, this ancestral maldiction took on the most sinister expression. It is in this country that one finds description of the curse as that made in 1857 by James A. Sloan, a Presbyterian minister. Ham deserved death for his unfulfilled Empire's conduct, but the great lawgiver saw fit in his good pleasure not to destroy Ham with the immediate death, but to set a mark of degradation on him. All of Ham's um, are his lineage are either black or dark color, thus bear upon their countenance the mark of inferiority which God put upon his progenitor. Black restraint, despise, bow down are the words used to express the condition and place of Ham's children bearing the mark of degradation of their skin. Now we move on in the writings, the Negro and the ethnological status by Ariel, um, written in 1867 on page four and five, the curse denounced against him that a servant of servants should be unto his brethren. And this curse was denounced against him for accidental sin of his father Noah naked, that this curse was to do so and did change him so that instead of being long, straight hair, high forehead, high nose, thin lips, white, as then was like his brothers Shem and Japheth, he was that day forth to be kinky headed, low foreheaded, thick lipped, black skinned, and that his name and his curse affected all this. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty of scriptures. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. And I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. 
when we look at how the slave masters controlled their slaves, um, this was found in an article that was written in um, December 11, 2018, entitled Why Bibles Given to Slaves Omitted Most of the Old Testament by Becky Little. The first slave Bible was published in 1807, three years after the Haitian Revolution ended. That revolution was the only slave revolt in history in which enslaved people successfully drove out their European oppressors to form a new nation and increased American and European paranoia that the people they oppressed would one day rise up against them. Whoever the slave Bible editors were there, they were really highlighted portions that would instill obedience and say Anthony Schmidt, a curator at Washington DC Museum of the Bible, which has a copy of the slave Bible on display. The Haitian Revolution could have been a motivation for publishing a Bible without the part where Moses tells Pharaoh to let my people go. Missionaries and planters may have thought that Christianity, at least certain parts of it, would protect against the revolution by teaching enslaved people to respect their masters. In context, Smith says that the British may have thought that the teaching enslaved people biblical lessons about obedience and accepting one's faith would help them be better slaves. The slave Bible doesn't include Moses leading Israelites to freedom, but it does include Joseph's enslavement in Egypt. In the U.S., some sermons aimed at his lot in life keeps his faith in God and in the end is rewarded for it. Schmidt says the slave Bible may have wanted to impart a similar lesson to his audience. Passages that emphasize equality between groups of people were also um, excluded. This included there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for all in one are Christ, Galatians 3 and 28. The Bible, the slave Bible also doesn't contain the book of Revelation, which tells a new heaven and a new earth in which evil will be punished. When we look at John chapter 44, oh my goodness. So when we look at John chapter 8, verse 44, it says, Ye are of your father the devil, the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So the origins of uh, lies comes from Satan himself, the devil. He's the father of lies, and he is the father of this lie of the myth of the curse of Ham and black skin is a sin. He is the originator and the father. He is the actual source that have jumped in men's mouths and men's hands to write certain things that are contrary to truth and the word of God. Let's go ahead and move on. Galatians 3 and 28 says his best. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ. So when we get saved, we get born again, baptized in the water, baptized in the spirit, we become one in Christ. We, we're neither Greek nor Jew. We're, we're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. When we look at Acts chapter 17, verse 26, and hath made 
of one blood, all nations of men for to dwell on all face of the earth and determine the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation. So even though we may be black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, we're all one blood and all nations of men, we don't dwell on the face of the earth. So we're all eventually one blood. To conclude, the curse of Ham, can a person carry on their ancestors' curse or sin? Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20 says it best. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be up on him. So our conclusion is that most definitely that the curse of him and black skin is a sin is a lie, it's a myth, but overall it's a lie. And the source of that lie, which has really perpetuated this lie over the years that has used religion, whether it's Christian or whether it's Islam or whether it's um, Judaism, the father of this lie is no other than the devil. Satan himself is the father of these lies. Amen. God bless.